How's everyone doing? Christian Hernandez here with Sports Video Group. We're headed into the IBC in the Parisian neighborhood of Le Barge. OBS has been at the core of every Olympic game since 2010 in Vancouver, and it continues this summer. So when you head to your left, right when you first walk in, they're showcasing the tech that's powering their broadcast and digital innovations. Here's a quick look at some of the tech in a top 10 format. We'll start things off with a handful of honorable mentions, starting with their virtual immersive world through Roblox. In an attempt to attract a younger demographic, users can visit a virtual Olympic village and museum about the history of the Olympics, play games, interact with other players, and a ton of other activations. Next, we have Serve Reaction Time. It's exclusively used for the men's and women's tennis tournament at Roland Garros, and it leverages a sensor near the player's shoulder to measure the serving speed and the recipient's reaction time. It's then added on screen as a real-time graphic. Multicam Replay is another one sitting on the outside looking in. Tapping into artificial intelligence, a trend you'll hear more about later, the viewer sees a cohesive composite and 360-degree image of a previous play. Rounding out the honorable mention is a storytelling tool, Athlete Moment, to carry over from the Tokyo Olympic Games, remote video feeds are brought together in a streamlined interface. So when a certain player wins and wants to react and speak with loved ones in real time, this setup is creating emotional moments for both the player and the family member or the friend that unfortunately can't be there to support in person. Now off to our top 10, we're going with object and athlete tracking. This is crucial for events like rowing, cycling, and many outdoor events with large playing surfaces. For rowing, sensors are put on the boat as well as the pedals that can calculate their speed. This is also being used for table tennis to track the speed of the ball after the athlete makes contact. Heading into the single digits at number nine, it's the Olympic video player and widgets. So fans can view live events, watch completed events, check in on the medal count of each nation and much more. Fans can also take a look at the day's schedule of competitions or for rights holders in the host city, their dedicated website can be populated with the schedule. It's another way for digital centric fans to stay informed on the games here in Paris. Numero Ocho is a really fun one. It's augmented reality and volumetric capture. OBS is leaning on an important partnership with Intel to create dynamic content that's involving the participants of the games. So here at the IBC, a setup that's similar to the one in the Olympic Village. It consists of multiple cameras at various angles, a designated outline on the floor that maps out how far an individual can move around and the power of volumetric capture. So after the person is done being recorded for about 10 seconds, a file is created instantly and these videos can be placed on any background in the physical world for engaging social media content. Up next is intelligent stroboscopic analysis. AI is being tapped to snap pictures of key moments of a competition to be shown on the live broadcast, but also be used by judges at the venues to give the most accurate score. This one was shown on the video board in the venue at Tuesday night's Women's Gymnastic Artistic Team All-Around Final. So the following three play off each other extremely well, so with number six, we have Automated Highlights Generation. Intel is playing yet another big role in this effort through machine learning, ingesting data from the broadcast and audio cues of the crowd from any specific event. The service is identifying and archiving any certain player's highlights for use later on. For social media posting, AI can determine numerous factors for optimal results, like the best lighting for the video, approved music, and other elements. Into the top five, we're off with commentary and interview transcriptions. This particular demo highlighted French being translated into English, so rights holders can take a certain piece of content and cater it to their specific viewing audience. The system is also being used during interviews to help reporters and athletes cross the language divide without the need for a translator. Moving right along at number four is generative assisted editing. So once these highlights are put together and transcription is added, this was done with a detailed AI description attached to a clip for quick retrieval and edited final delivery. The final three rely on cloud-based workflows to get the job done. So at number three, it's the OBS Live Cloud. Through a relationship with Alibaba since the 2018 Pyeongchang Games, this will allow rights holders to leave behind satellite or fiber transmission and instead receive live content via the cloud. It takes about three seconds to begin receiving an HD or UHD feed, and four emission points in Tokyo, Singapore, Frankfurt, and Virginia help speed up delivery. Rolling off of that is OBS's Content Plus at number two. This delivery platform is the product of the OBS Live Cloud and will facilitate over 11,000 hours of content, including highlights, rule books on a new event, and more. And for the first time, this content is also available to be downloaded in three different resolutions for linear, digital, and social. And at number one, toppering our list is the virtualized OB Van project. 
Traditional on-site mobile units are located at select venues, but other venues are outfitted with off-the-shelf compute rather than dedicated hardware for each piece of equipment. Ultimately, this workflow encompasses the main goal of the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris, to be the most sustainable in the history of the Games. This is just a small sample size of what OBS is doing, so please stay tuned to our website, sportsvideo.org, for the most up-to-date developments from this year's Summer Olympics.